In a previous video, we had considered how to write the electronic configurations of atoms up to a Z of 36, up to an atomic number of 36. In this video, we're going to expand that a little bit to include now how to write the configurations of ions, those are species that have either gained or lost electrons, up to again a Z of 36. This is going to be a short video because the principles are quite simple. So make sure that by now you have watched the other video for the configuration of neutral atoms up to a Z of 36. Otherwise, you're going to be lost in this one. So here's how we do it for ions. Okay, it's very simple. There are two rules. The first rule is the following. For transition metal ions, which are special ions, transition metal ions, we're going to remove electrons from the s orbital first. And then, for every other one, for other elements, we add or remove electrons in the obvious way. I'll show you what I mean by the obvious way in a second. But for transition metal ions, we remove from the s orbital first. Okay? Transition metal ions usually will not be gaining electrons because metals don't gain electrons. Metals lose electrons. That's what makes them metals. That's why electricity conducts through metals because the metals don't care about their electrons and the electrons move away from them. Okay, so let's get started with an example and try and apply these principles. It says we need to write out the full electronic configuration of the Mg2+, magnesium 2 plus ion. How do we go about doing this? Well, first, we find magnesium in the periodic table. Okay, we see it here, and it has an atomic number of 12, which means we need also 12 electrons. So we're going to start out by writing the configuration of the neutral, neutral Mg, and once we've done that, then since this is not a transitional metal ion, a transition metal ion would be these ones here in the D block, right? It's not one of those. Therefore, we just use the obvious way, and I'll show you what that is now. So let's try it. First, we write the configuration of just Mg. Okay, what does that look like? I'm going to use the periodic table method here. So first, we fill in the period uh, 1. Okay, remember that helium really belongs here. Okay, in terms of electronic configuration. So we fill this in. Hopefully you remember how to do this. We write period one. Then here we're in the S block here. These first two are in the S block. So one S, and we have two elements there, one S2. So we fill that up. We go now to the next one because helium there is canceled. So we have period two there, so two. And we're still in the S block, S. And we have two elements there, so superscript two for the two electrons that would get filled there. Then we go over there, now we're in the P block, so this all here is the P block. So there we have now, we're still in period two, P, and how many elements there? Six, therefore there will be six electrons we would need to add as we go across that period. And finally we get to here where we care about, so now we're in period three, we're in the S block, and there are two elements, so we have three, period three, S block, and two elements. So those are the two electrons that would get filled for magnesium. Now, this is neutral magnesium. What do we do to make Mg2 plus? Well, Mg2 plus means it must have lost two electrons. So what do we do? The obvious way. What's the obvious way? Just remove the last two that we put in. Let me change my color so I can do that, okay? So we just remove these last two, up, 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 and we are done. So here is the electronic configuration of the neutral magnesium, uh, sorry, the uh, Mg2 plus ion. Notice that it would be the same electronic configuration as just pure neon there, okay? So it assumes that noble gas configuration there, and that would be our answer, so the obvious way. Let's look at another one. It says write out the full electronic configuration of the fluorine uh, mononegative ion, okay? And I give you there the atomic number of 9. How do we do this? For this one, I'm going to use the Madelung diagram approach. Hopefully you remember the Madelung diagram. You go ahead and you write 1s, okay, then 2s, 2p, then 3s, 3p, 3d, and so on and so forth, okay? And then we're going to stab through, we're going to stab through those, those uh, sublevels in order to figure out the order, okay? And we can also annotate with the number of orbitals in each. You remember for orbitals, it goes 1, 3, 5, and then 7 for the F, but we, we haven't got, gotten to the F here because I know fluorine doesn't need an F. 
So let's go ahead and do that. For fluorine now, we need nine electrons. So for the 1s, what are we going to have? We're going to have 1s2. So I'm starting now with the neutral fluorine, just regular fluorine. So 1s2, because that one contains one orbital, therefore it contains two electrons. Okay. The p sublevels contain three orbitals, therefore six electrons. All right. And the d orbitals contain five orbitals, sorry. <laughs> the d sublevel contain five orbitals and therefore 10 electrons. Okay, so here we have 1s2, then 2s2, again. Then what next? You tell me. It should be 2p, right? So we have 2p, and we can fit in six there, but we don't need all six because we're doing neutral fluorine, which has nine protons. So we only need for neutral fluorine nine electrons. We already have two, therefore we just need out we just need a 5 there, 2p5. But now this is neutral fluorine. How about when we add one electron to it to make it singly negative? Well, we do it the obvious way. We just add to the last one. Okay, so 2p6 would be the fluorine ion there. And we are done. Nice and easy. Let's look at another one. For this one, we're asked to write the condensed configuration of the Fe2 plus ion. So where is Fe? Where is iron? Iron is here. Okay, and this is indeed a transition metal ion, or it's a transition metal, and therefore its ion is going to be a transition metal ion. So we need to use this special rule. But first of all, let's write out the condensed configuration for neutral fluorine. So let's start out just with neutral fluorine. How do we do this? Uh, let's use the periodic table method here. Uh, so we start with the, since we're doing the condensed electronic configuration, we need to find the previous noble gas, the last noble gas, and that will be here. So if you count backwards from 26 backwards, 19 there, then you get to 18, we see argon. So we start by putting out, putting argon here in square brackets. Okay, and therefore we are implying all of the electronic configurations that make up argon there. So the 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, all of that is implied here by the square brackets. And now we need to get the uh, neutral iron. So what do we need? We need a 4s2 here, right? Because we're in period four. And the s block, there are two elements, therefore two electrons there. And then here, remember always to fall down the stairs here. So we go from 4s to 3d, not to 4d like you might think. So 4s2 to what? 3d. Okay, and since we're doing iron, we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Position 6 there, we have 3D, 6, okay? And that would be now neutral iron. Now, what do we do to make it Fe2 plus ion? To become Fe2 plus, it needs to what? Lose two electrons, okay? How do we make it lose two electrons? If this were not a transition metal ion, we would go the obvious way. We would lose from that 3D. But since it is a transition metal, we lose from the s orbital first. So for Fe2+, plus, therefore, we would have what? We would have the following. We would have argon. And then we lose those 4s2, and we just have 3d6. And that would be the electronic configuration of Fe2+. Plus. Hopefully that makes sense. So we've covered basically the two rules now. The transition metal rule and the regular rule. Try this example now. I'm not going to solve it, but I will just show you the answer. So pause the video and work through it. In three seconds, I will reveal the answer. One, two, three. There's your answer there, C. So it's astatine, which is down there. It's not a transition metal. Okay, and it gains three electrons. So you start with just pure astatine, and then you add the three electrons the obvious way, which would give you here C. Okay, so we got another one. Which of these is the correct configuration for the titanium 2 plus cation? Hopefully you remember that cations are positively charged ions. You can remember that by thinking that T looks like positive, cation, cat positive ion. So pause it and think through it. I'm not going to solve it manually for you here. So pause the video and work. In three seconds, I will reveal the answer. One, two, three. There's your answer. Okay, so remember now that since we are working with uh, titanium, which is a transition metal, you need to lose the 4s um, 
electrons first. This one does not respect that. Or actually this one, what's the problem with this one? Let's see. A is wrong. Remember to remove the electrons from the s orbital first for the transition metals. Uh, do I have a duplicate? Okay, I see. Yes, yes. So the answer is indeed B, because that one we lost the D electrons, whereas here we should lose the S electrons. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to you. So we start from the, the configuration for titanium, and then we lose the S's, because that is the rule for transition metal ions. And now I think we are done with this. You might need a bit more practice, so if you do, if you do need that, go to the website and uh, find some examples. But uh, until the future video, I bid you farewell. Bye-bye.